Hi, this is Scott Garibay, and today I'm going to be talking about Dungeons and Dragons 5th Edition and When Death Visits. All right, so today I want to talk to you about an opportunity we have in Dungeon Mastering. So this is specifically a Dungeon Mastering Tips video, and uh, it comes from a real-life experience I, re I just recently had that really reminded me of a huge opportunity that often I will miss in my Dungeons & Dragons Dungeon Mastering. And I was thinking it really is important that we use this in our Dungeons & Dragons um, game. So what is that? Well, that is funerals and memorials, all right? So first I'm going to talk about my real-life experience, and then I want to talk about how we convert that into powerful, dynamic world-building, right? How we, how we turn that into... Um, compelling content for our player characters as Dungeon Masters, okay? So the first thing I want to talk about is a memorial I recently went to, okay? So I am connected with an organization, and recently a very a key member of that organization, a leader within our organization, one of the leaders within our organization, kind of like second or third tier leader within our organization, uh, passed away, all right? Now this person was like in their 60s, late 60s, and um, when this person passed away, we held a memorial in the place where we gather once a week for this person, okay? And I was stunned and shocked with the response of our organization and the community around our organization uh, at the death of this person, okay? Now, what happened was the place where we usually organize, uh, you know, once a week, when we gather once a week, it's like half-filled, Right, maybe three quarters on a good week. Right. Well, when this person passed, we filled that place. Right. There were about four hundred people that came out to celebrate the life of this person who had passed, and it was amazing. You could see all the different people this person knew uh, coming out and sharing good memories of what that person had done when they were alive. Right. And I was dramatically struck as just a human being and a member of this organization uh, at the response to the death of this person, okay? And I thought, oh my goodness. And when I looked at it, I'm like, we should be doing this in our games, especially with non-player characters. So in Dungeons & Dragons, all right, um, Dungeons & Dragons uh, has three, Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition has three pillars. It has interaction, exploration, and combat. And I think one of the things we're doing right now within the game is we are freeing the game from a myopic focus on combat, right? Uh, Mike Merles, man, I just I have so, my my respect for him grows every day when you look at what he's accomplished with Dungeons and Dragons and how the game has changed. And so, when they identified these three pillars in Dungeons and Dragons Fifth Edition, uh, exploration, interaction, and combat, uh, that was, in my opinion, Mike Merles just jamming a flag in the ground and saying, in Dungeons and Dragons. One third of this game is dedicated to combat. That's it. That's the limit, right? If you have, if if your game is spending more than a third of your time on combat, you're doing it wrong, right? And reality is, um, Mike Mike Morals is really talking about a problem that has really plagued Dungeons and Dragons for every single edition. And I'll tell you right now, I don't think the vast majority of Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition games spend one third of their time on combat. I think that most most of them spend 70 to 90% of their time on combat and 10 to 30% on interaction and exploration. But by putting that flag in the ground and, and putting a banner out to the whole community saying combat needs to be a third or less of our game, really made a huge impact on me. And so I'm looking for opportunities in my Dungeons and Dragons games to move my games into painting a world and allowing my player characters to interact with vibrant, alive, realistic non-player characters where they can explore modern uh, analogies for modern tri trials that we go through and for real social, social interaction to happen at the table that makes us stronger people overall, right? So when I thought about the, you know, this this memorial, so I thought about funerals and memorials and how, how we should be using these in our games. Here's what I came up with. So with a memorial, you want to place a memorial in your game, right? And I would say this belongs in like one in maybe basically this shouldn't happen more than once every three months in your game, you know, but but 
definitely at least in a story arc, you should be having a memorial or a funeral happening, okay? And the, the reason for it is it's going to stop the player characters. It's just going to stop them in their tracks and say, hey, you guys are in this village, this town, you know, or this city, and this person has died, and these people are coming together to celebrate. In a memorial, they're going to celebrate their life, right? And it shows the player characters how this non-player character how they impact, how that one person could change that village, that town, that city, that kingdom, that realm, or even an entire plane, right? And you and when you bring together a memorial as a dungeon master, you should be spending as much time in designing that memorial so that you know how to explain the clothes, so that you know how to explain the, the food. So that you know how to explain the music, right? So that you show how the people of this ta- of this city, uh, of this village, of this city or this town, how they celebrate, how they show grief, right? These are incredibly important ways to paint a picture of our world, right? Uh, of the world that we're presenting to the players, right? And to really bring it to life. It's incredibly important. And so we show that, you know, these non-player characters are real and what they feel is real and what they, in our game, of course, uh, and what they feel is real in that world, right? And this is how you bring interaction and exploration into the game. And the memorial is fulfilling both. It's fulfilling a chance to interact for the player characters to interact with the non-player characters and for them to explore the culture, the local politics, the local culture, the local society in your world, right? And if you find this difficulty, if you find this difficult, right, you really have to think, what am I doing as a dungeon master? What am I focusing on as a dungeon master? How do I honor the three pillars of Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition? How do I honor interaction, exploration, and combat? And how do I make sure that combat is never more than a third of my game, right? It's just, uh, I think it's really important, right? So, um... So that memorial is going to show pe- the people and the region through the memorial itself. It's going to show them in high detail. It's going to show them in vibrant colors. You're going to get a chance to talk about the smells of the food, how the food is prepared, who prepares the food, right? All these things are incredibly important. And you can make your, your, re- you know, your village or your city or your town, you can make it different than our world. You can make it different than our country. You can make it different than Tolkien made it, right? And this is an opportunity to paint your world. It's incredibly important, right? Um, You want to use the death of one non-player character to bring 10 non-player characters to vibrant life, to illuminate that village or that town or that city, right? I want to talk briefly about funerals. The player characters may be invited to a funeral, Right where they may actually be part uh, part of a funeral, right? And there, and ha- what do we learn there? Well, they are very different than memorials, so we have to you have to manage funerals incredibly different than you would manage a memorial. Okay, so one of the things you would do there is you really the big thing to show here is what are the traditions, what are the sacred rites that surround death, how are corpses handled. Who handles corpses, right? Where are people buried? How are they buried? Are they buried? Like maybe they're burned, you know? And in your game, you want to think that through. In this village, in this town, in this city, right? In this region, how do these people handle the processing of a corpse? And this is incredibly important. And also, you're giving your player characters a chance to show respect or they may show disrespect, and you need to be ready to bring consequences if disrespect are shown. And I also, with the flip of that, you need to be ready to show, um, to to grant rewards when respect is shown. When respect is shown to people who are being celebrated in a community by outsiders, sometimes those outsiders can be very well rewarded, right? In small and simple and maybe even in some beautiful ways, Right. So I just wanted to talk to you today about Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition and when death visits. 
right? And I will say, I recently was blessed to go to this memorial of this person who had served the organization that I'm connected with for many years, and I had seen firsthand this person's service, right? And their generosity, their kindness, um, you know, and, and also you should be looking at this with your non-player characters. You want to highlight, you know, the, their, their kindness and their encouragement, how they invested in that, in, in the people and in the, you know, in the village, in the town and in the city, in the village, did they invest money? Did they invest time? Did they invest wisdom? Right. And I just, you know, I went to this memorial and it was just packed with people who had experienced love from this person who had passed, and then they were echoing love back toward that person has passed. They couldn't echo love to them anymore, right? But they could echo love to the family and the friends of those people. And it was it really struck me, you know, as a person right in the heart, how what a beautiful thing it was. And as dungeon masters, we really need to be including funerals and memorials for non player characters in our games. This is a powerful, powerful way to paint a story and show what's happening in your world. Please consider liking and subscribing. Thank you.